Welcome to Cruise Ports on a Budget, where I'll show you some of the things you can do in various cruise ports without spending a fortune. Well, here we are in Gibraltar. It's uh, not a particularly big place, so there's not a great deal you can do apart from wander into town and uh, head up the rock. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, there are ships excursions available, but we're not going to do those. The aim on this trip is to uh, explore everything on our own and see how much money we can save. So this is our first port actually, so let's see how we do on this one. Uh, one good option for Gibraltar, which we did last time, was these uh, taxi tours which take you up to the top of the rock. Uh, probably more expensive now, but I think we paid um, £30 for a, a whole taxi for four of us last time, which turned out to be good value. Another option to get into town is to take a uh, shuttle taxi. Costs about four pounds or a six pound return. It's about 15 minute walk into town, but uh, it's not a very pleasant walk. So taxi is possibly a good idea. As I say, it's not a particularly nice walk into uh, town itself. You can go past all this industrial stuff. The first thing you come across is this uh, monument to uh, the civilians who were moved from Gibraltar during Second World War to uh, the United Kingdom. To make a circular walk, we headed first through the business part of town, complete with uh, Morrison's supermarket, And of course, those uh, friendly reminders of the British influence. Not too far away is Commonwealth Park, uh, which you can cut through. And there's a lift uh, which takes you up to the main part of town. We're at the top end of Main Street now, passing by the old convent. Just opposite are these guns. You'll find a lot of guns in Gibraltar. And everywhere you'll find the British influence. Here we're leaving the old town through one of the many gates. This is Prince Edward's Gate. And about 500 metres from Prince Edward's Gate uh, is the base of the cable car. The cable car is not cheap and it's even more expensive if you want to go into the nature reserve. When we were last here about seven years ago, there was no separate charge for the nature reserve. One of the attractions of Gibraltar is the Barbary Apes at the top of the rock. But don't go too close to them because they'll snatch anything they can out of your hand.
if you don't pay for the nature reserve, you're pretty much restricted to some old World War II uh, fortifications. Uh, to be honest, uh, this area is a bit of a tip. Apart from that, you have a cafe and a restaurant, uh, plus some good views over the rest of Gibraltar. We only spent about half an hour at the top before heading back down again. About 100 metres from the lower terminus of the Kaibuka are the Botanic Gardens, which are well worth a visit. There are several monuments to look out for dotted around the town to previous governors of Gibraltar. We're heading back into town now past the Trafalgar Cemetery. Although this is called the Trafalgar Cemetery, there are only two people buried here who fought at the Battle of Trafalgar, and this is the first of them. And this looks to be the other one. The rest of the people buried here are people who died round about the same time, but didn't necessarily fight in the battle. We're heading back into town now through Southport Gate. Just outside Southport Gate, you'll find South Bastion with a statue of Lord Nelson. Mm -hmm. 
As we got back to the high street, we were lucky enough to catch the Ceremony of the Keys, which is performed uh, by the Gibraltar Reenactment Association every That's Saturday at noon. General Salute present arms! Escort, slow, arms! Escort to the Keys! Part of the Color Party! General Salute present arms! Escort to the keys, slow arms. Escort to the keys, forward march. The main high street is always bustling with tourists and is lined by many modern shops with a few traditional shops thrown in. Just off the high street is the Cathedral of the Holy Trinity, which rather strangely was being used for a craft fair when we went. There are plenty of treats to be had on your walk down the high street. Another cathedral right on the high street itself is the Cathedral of St Mary the Crowned. Once we come to the end of the high street, uh, we end up in Casemates Square. The last time we were here, Roy's Fish and Chips did the best fish and chips we've ever had. But sadly, they don't seem to be open at the moment. But there are alternatives. Once you're through uh, Casemate Square, you're back to urban reality. Just outside the square is the North Bastion. This is the final sightseeing stop before heading back to the ship. I 
Well, I don't think we could have asked for a better day weather-wise uh, for Gibraltar. And it's been a beautiful day. Uh, not a great deal to do in Gibraltar, but uh, we've had a lovely wander around, get to the top of the rock, and we're now heading back on board. So let's see what we saved by doing things ourselves. The equivalent shore excursion of a walk around town and a ride in the cable car would have cost £110 uh, for the two of us. Doing things ourselves, we spent just £34 on the cable car. Check out my other videos to see what you can save in other ports.